welcome to a new Unity 3D tutorial. So we're going to break away from the AI like we said, we're going to take a break from it if people don't want that AI system. And we're going to do something cool which um, a friend of mine on YouTube called Darwin Colgan, um, I think that's his name, I can't remember, even though I looked at it five minutes ago, but um, he requested a Max Payne or a GTA 5 um, weapon wheel kind of thing. So thought about it easily enough, He, I don't actually have the game he showed me and like tell me the details so here it is here's the photoshop of it I did so there's the wheel it's a bit different to what it says but all we're gonna do is put the pictures on top then you get the bottom one highlighted the side one highlighted the other side and the top one so when you highlight over it and it is transparent as well so you will be able to see through it so it's really really easy to do and we're gonna have a go at it today so the first thing we're gonna do is start making our script that simple so there are two ways we can do this, we can do it on player fire or we can just create a new weapon wheel script. I prefer to create a new weapon wheel script and just merge it with player fire, it might work easier. So what I'm going to do is go to my scripts folder and we're going to stick it in weapons, in fact hoods, hoods is better. Right click, create javascript and we'll type weapon wheel and we'll open it up. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to have one image for our texture and then obviously it will be an array to store the rest of the textures. So we'll just start by creating that var weapon, in fact we'll just say textures, it works easier, texture 2D and my auto thing isn't coming on, equals new texture 2D and then we need the current, we need blank, we need the four selections so that's five and try six, right, bad maths. So texture 2D, 6, perfect, we'll consign them in a minute. We also have 4 game objects or 1 array. So this will be called var weapons and we'll say colon and we'll, we'll actually say it's a string array and we'll say equals new, text, well new string and then we'll say we've got 4 slots, 4 things. So what they, is, what they will do is store the information about each of them. So say the top one, say the fireball, um, when you highlight over it, it'll show in the middle, fireball, kind of thing. So it's the name of them, if you wish. So we don't need function start. We will need function update, but later. So let's create our function GUI. On GUI. So in here, all we're literally going to do is create a... This will house in the background one. And then we'll just create four boxes on top of it, and then that'll be in total. So here, because the way I've done it is I've got one background and then I've selected them all so we have one image which changes. You could do it so each box changes but then you'll have to end up having eight images where I've only, I've only done it with six so it's the way you want it but so here I'll type gui.box and I'll put a new one in because this box won't be able to be pressed. So gui box will say screen.width divided by two minus 256 and we're doing the same thing as we did for the space one so I'll explain it in a minute when we get there 512 512 so the reason it's screen dot width is so it stretches across the screen but we're dividing it by two so it's in half but then we minus it by 256 and it'll be dead on in the center of the screen hopefully so we also need to specify what it's using so put a bracket there and it'll be using textures bracket zero that simple. And we have an error because I never put my rect in. So bracket rect, bracket, there we go. So there's the first one done. So now we need to create four boxes inside of that which go around it. But it's it's it, it's got prone to mess up quite a lot. So we'll change it to a group instead. So gui.begin group. All this can stay the exact same. All we have to add is gui.end group on the end. Like that. Because then we everything we put in, even if we do move it, like if you change your mind and want it in the top corner, you're not messing with every single number, just the number inside it. So, um, say we need the top box now, so so we'll type gui dot box. In fact, we'll make it a button. A button will be better because as soon as we are selecting things, so it'll be a rect, and the position will be at the top, so it'll be zero, and a, well. We'll say, so of course I don't know what these numbers are, so we'll just say 100 across, that seems to work, I think, I hope. And we'll say 0 down for the top one, because we're in the top box, but for the stretch across, 400 and 100. 
yeah that seems to work um, it needs something inside it so we'll say nothing because there's no textures we need so we just type print top weapon it's just so we can test it so we grab these duplicate and we'll call this one uh, we'll send this all the way down to the bottom so we'll say around about 400 that should work and we'll say bottom weapon duplicate this again and we need to edit it this time so this one will be 100 the y-axis will be 400 so it's at the side now and then we'll just reverse all the numbers pretty much so that should be that one and then the final one so this should be to the right weapon and this should be the left weapon and all we do is simply reverse these numbers so it's 0 and 100 so let's see if it works because that's pretty much it. it obviously that won't work that's the GUI of it I should probably mention that but. so we'll stick that on our GUI scripts because it's the best place for it uh, so we've got weapons here which you don't need to worry about yet and then we've got these here so we're going to assign these ones so by default it'll be blank we, we know that so the blank one there then we have the blank one again and then we have the four areas so I'll say the top one then I'll say the right one would make more sense so northeast south and west so I'm just going to go back into the script and mark it out so we know which one it is here so we'll say current um, blank top left, no it's right, right, <laughs> right, um, bottom, and left, I keep trying to write north, east, south, west, so my brain's getting confused there, but so, that should pop up pretty much instantly, because we haven't set no boundaries for it to show or anything, but we'll set them up in a minute, so, it should show straight up, we'll be able to see it, it should look, oh, look at that, we are so close to being perfect on that, so you can see the areas we need to take it off by a hundred on the top one and move it across a bit and pretty much all of them need to be halved but then move down a little bit and then that should be it it should work fine hopefully so there might be little areas you'll not be able to select but we could fix that eventually so i'll just yeah so what we're going to do is correct these numbers so i'm going to say this first one we'll set it to say 83 so it's a bit to the left We'll set the sizes for 3, 4, 6 for the up and down. So here and here. We'll set the X's the same as well because they'll be on the same level. For this one we'll say 143. Uh, yeah, that'll do. For the right weapon, what we'll actually select it as, well not select, we'll say for the X axis we'll say around 3, 6, 8. That seems to work. For the Y position of the right weapon, we'll say 80. All these numbers are in the description codes, or you can copy it while I'm doing it. Um, we'll say 143 for that, and 346 for that. And same again for this, just like that. The X axis will be the same for both. But yet the 80 won't be, so instead it'll be, instead that'll be 80. So I'll say this bottom one here is three, um, six, eight. That'll work. In fact, three, six, six. That's that seems better. And then three, four, six, one, four, three. That's right. So right weapon. Uh, that looks okay. And then the left weapon will be zero. And then that should work. So just some random numbers there. So let's click play, and you should see that it should be almost perfect. Oh look at that, it's pretty much spot on perfect. I wonder how that got so good. Yes, I did it off screen because I knew how long that would have took. But there is one glitch I've found is that you can actually select both at once. Which is not what we need. But, ee, it'll work. It'll do. So we've got that, but now we need to actually make it so when we highlight over one, it goes, well, Y and not outline kind of thing so it's actually really simple to do because we've done it before so it turns out we don't actually have the 
um, hover code, which I thought we did. It must have been another project of mine. But it's really, really very simple, but it can get a bit long. So what you do for everything you want to be hovered over is we're going to go be below it because it just makes it easy to keep them together. And we're basically going to say if, and then we, we need to specify what rect we're using or what position because we're basically saying if the mouse is in within this position. So if we just copy this and say if rect, so there's our rect, dot contains, which basically means if it's within kind of thing it's a lot like doing if it's more than 83 but less than zero but plus 40 that it's just it saves loads of if statements basically so if it contains and then inside of brackets we put event which is um events are like when the mouse has been pressed when a key has been pressed when the mouse is moved when the mouse is clicked and dragged all those are types of different events so we're going to get event dot current so that means any event what's currently happening right now and then we'll type dot mouse position with a capital p and just finish off all your brackets and you don't even need the double brackets because it's that short but yeah so what that'll do is if your mouse enters the boundaries of this so it create an invisible box or the rect of this then it says dot contains and if you say that it works fine if you put it as a variable you can just put the variable name there it works the exact same so in here, when we highlight over the top box, what do we want to happen? We want textures, zero, to equal textures, and I believe the top is three, two, it's two, zero, one, two, yeah. So that's that one. So we'll just try one of them to make sure it 100% works, and then we can do the rest. It's really, really very simple. But as you can see, I have an error. You don't expect 18, I 18, I guessed it was right here, semicolon. So, as you can see though, for every single time we want um, a hover effect, we need a if statement. So it's not the best, but it's programming, what can you do? So, um, if you if you wanted them all to do the same thing, you could just use a thing. But if we highlight that one, nothing, 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 boom, look at that. Obviously that looks terrible, and when you let go it doesn't fix it. So we need to make it fix. That really does look awful, doesn't it? I might refix that texture when off screen. But. So let's finish up. So if it highlights over that, okay. So I'm going to actually move this just because this script's quite short. And I'm going to put it below this. So um, hover effects. So if it highlights over that one, we can put here top. We can duplicate it and we can put else. Because if we leave it as if statements, it's checking each individual one. But if we just leave put an else statement, it won't. So if we do this one here, if that contains event that current mouse position, this is the bottom one. We can say, uh, I have no idea which one it was. GUI scripts. Uh, the bottom one is number four. So four, and then we can duplicate it again. Then we can say this one is the right, which is that one, which will be number three. And then this one, one more. Well, one more after this. So paste the numbers in and then call it the right one. And then say it's number five. And then for the final one, you're going to duplicate it and you're going to get rid of the if. So, and you're just going to note it as nothing. So if it, if it can't, if it's not in any of them, then it equals one. That's simple really. So if you don't highlight anything, equals one. Let's try it. Boom, 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 boom. Oh dear, why is it moving? That's not very good. I'll have to fix that. That's a texture issue though. But as you can see, it's changing it. Perfect. So now we can select different weapons. So last thing we're going to do before end of the tutorial is we're going to actually make it show or go, pretty much. So I'm going to create a simple variable. In fact, we could even do it in here. So what I'm going to type is if input.get key up. In fact, we'll just choose get key. And I want the tilde key. Now, if you don't know what the tilde key is, look at your numbers at top of your keyboard where you've got tab, Q, W, E, 1, 2, 3 above it. Right next to it, at the end of it, under escape and above tab, there's a key with three weird lines on. One looks like a sideways L, an apostrophe, and two lines. If you press it, that's called the tilde key. So I want to use that one for mine. So if the input that presses that or holds it down, then it'll show the GUI. Otherwise, it will do nothing. 
Hopefully, that's my theory. So, we can put that there. So, if we hold tilde key down, we can select a weapon, otherwise it won't do anything. So, it shouldn't show right now. So, hold tilde key down. I want that weapon. Click, and it disappears. Perfect. So, obviously, we'll have to make it work much, much better next time. But there's the basics of it very very basics we've still got a lot more to do but it's been 15 minutes so i've showed you how to hover effect which is a really cool trick to know we've wanted that before in the past really really simple if you've ever used visual studio you'll know a lot about events because they use it as well these are events here button clicks it's the same on gui is a kind of event but yeah so that's all i'm going to do for this tutorial i really hope you liked it and um, thank you for darwin to darwin for the suggestion and i'll see you next time